Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it's just to join me today as we talk to Throbon, I think it was his name, here in the Gardens of Briar. And this, apparently, is a hidden spot here in the city of Carey. That's right, we're in the city of Carey. They included this map in the uh, fourth version of the game. I mean, it's it's probably it's not too too uh, difficult to program it in, but yes, this is. I'm not playing the second game. I'm playing the f the fourth one, the fourth part of Sorcery. Uh, so yeah, let's continue talking to the guy. And um, one of our options is to say that this place is hidden from the Archmage. You observe. Quite so, Throbin replies. The Archmage would chew a dead sponge mushroom and then eat my brains if he had the chance. Best for all of us if um, that doesn't happen. Oh. But I must return to Mampang, you insist. I have a mission of great importance, I know, Throbin nods. But I must tell you, if you attempt your mission, you will die. I do not fear death. You should. In Mampang, death can be quite final. The reach of the gods is limited there. There is not always a way out, and you will die. Throbin points at a nearby flower. Do you see this one? Purple thorn thornweed? Only grows in one place, the slopes above my home village. Oh, where's that? I grew up in the same village as the Archmage, you know? A small place called Karayama. Maybe you've heard of it? He sweeps away his face hidden from view. This way now. Oh, wait a minute. You guys remember that guy that we found at the end of part 3? Um, wasn't he headed towards Karayama? I thought he was a ghost. Uh, Karayama, of course, was the village that we found at the north eastern, the uh, northeastern edge of the northwestern area of the third game's map, if that makes any sense, I hope it does, uh, it's that little village that was only in the past, and um, got completely obliterated, and I'm not really sure why, uh, in, I'm not really sure why at all, in, in, in the future, or in the present, rather, so I'm not, I'm not really sure at all, uh, he sweeps away his face hidden from view, this way now, he steps between two plants and disappears, Okay, let's go into the gardens, I guess. Let me drag this properly. You push your way between the plants and find the beggar waiting. Only now he's no beggar, but a tall, handsome man wearing a long cloak embroidered with runes of power. There you are, he booms. I was told to expect you. Told by who? A younger self, I think, he replies. Though it's not always easy to tell, he frowns. Please excuse any confusion. I use these gardens for conversation quite extensively. But I have the space. Uh, I have to space them out. One cannot have things overlapping. Now then, what? What do you mean now then? He believe he smiles. I believe we are. Will be talking about Mampang and your impending death. Will you help me? I won't save your life if that's what you mean. He replies. I may make your death a little more valuable. However, he points up. The dome is gone and it's now night time. Stars shine overhead. I like these gardens for one reason above all. Can you see what it is? The constellations? Exactly, he sighs with evident pleasure. Look up there, he declares, pointing. This one uh, of only this is one of only two places in Carrie where the stars of the Z spell can be seen. The other is by the north gate. But that's but that spot's rather too busy. Yeah, we I don't remember being able to, to cast a spell there at all. Uh, I wonder if you can actually. Now that I know this, I might I might want to go when I replay through the game by myself. I, I might want to check that out and try to try to do that. Um, but uh, the Z spell, if you don't remember, it's the last spell in our spell book. It said that only one person ever cast it. Actually, we probably should check the spell book and see what it says. So this is the most formidable spell in lore, but no one knows why. In all recorded history, this spell has been cast only once by a powerful necromancer from Thor. Throbin was... what? By a powerful necromancer from Throbin? That's the name of this guy. Hm. It was never seen again. Its effects are unknown. The necromancer's notes were found, but were crazed and unclear. Treat with extreme caution. Wait a minute, we found notes... We found notes... Um, let me let me go to the clues. Uh, so I got the Birdman... No, that's not it. I don't have the, the notes anymore. You guys remember the notes that we found in that destroyed tower? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have the notes here. I am gonna need to look at the footage if I want those. Because they all said like weird things like this doesn't work or this or that. I don't actually remember but maybe now. Hmm. Anyway. Um. What do you know of that spell? 
The mention of Zed makes you stop short. The secret magic. The most powerful knowledge. Unknown to all. What do you know of that spell, you demand? Zed, he intones, is the great discovery of the Necromancers. A spell powerful by, uh, powered by and fascinated by death. Some... Fascinated? Yeah. Uh, some thought it prevented death, but it does not. Quite the opposite. The stars of Zed cause a death of the most significant final kind. What kind of death is that? The true death. The absence. But the secret is too powerful to share openly. Please. He gestures at, an, at another path, leading between trees as wide as bears and uh, that, that have fallen together to form an arc. After you. Okay. Wait, 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 let me, let me, I don't, I'm not really being given a choice, so it doesn't really matter what I think about this, but I, I kind of, let's see, the truth that the absence, but the secret is too powerful to share openly, uh, does that cause, yeah, okay, so maybe he wants to cast that spell on me, because he doesn't seem to have cast it upon himself, hmm, I don't know, you slip under the arc and arrive in a field of bright yellow and purple flowers, terrifically overgrown, brambles choke the edges of the path, the man does not follow, I'm gonna move on. The beggar has abandoned you. It seems you must find a path back to Manpang yourself. Oh, really? Ugh, let's go onwards. I'm gonna trust on the guy. I think he's my friend. I really hope he is. Although, at this point, I, I, I have no idea. I have no reason to believe that he's my friend. The Archmage might turn out to be my greatest ally, for all I know. I don't know. You push forwards, although that actually would contradict a... B although I'm probably being used by the King of Analand, so... But to some extent, I don't... Because... It's weird how the game tries to force me to say that the uh, the Archmage is, is evil, when it doesn't really give nearly enough reason for you to believe so. So it's kind of, it's like the game is trying to force me, either subconsciously or through practical means by having me being able to say that the Archmage is evil, to try to force me to believe that's the case. And then maybe he's gonna... I'm just conjecturing at this point. I know a, a few of you guys uh, have played the game to the end, so it, it's... I hope this doesn't sound just like total BS, but, uh, well, this is how I see things. I think... I think the, the story is wide open at this point. I really don't know what to think of this guy. So you push forward through the towering flowers into an area of cracked blue paving and fronded shrubs in glass pots. To your relief, the beggar is here once more. He looks older than ever. Now you understand, he hisses. Now you see why you have to die. No, I do not understand you. I'll tell you all you need to know, he says. The Zed spell is difficult to cast. You see, because you can't cast it at once, you have to cast it at two separate times. Two times, but one casting. Got it? Oh. Like left and right hands clapped, clasped together, he demonstrates linking thumbs and flapping his fingers like a butterfly. So you must... You be, No, I don't think that's what he means. Begin now and finish later. I think what he means is that two times in a, the most the magical sort of way, the, the way we've been dealing with it. So, I'm gonna say nothing here. You say nothing and the beggar continues to talk. So you cast it then and before. <laughs> and that's the crazy thing about it. Is you, need, you need to cast it in the future and then in the past. In that order, apparently. And when both castings are cast, they are the same casting. Two castings at uh, different times cannot be at different times, so the time between disappears. He squashes his butterfly fingers into a single two-handed fist. And the time collapses? Beautifully put, he replies. The beggar spits a tooth and picks it up to admire. Be valuable that one, day, one of these days. What? Be valuable that one of these days, he remarks. Again, I... He said this before. Now then. No, okay, so now then, I think I just gave it the wrong intonation. And this might be the same. Be valuable that one of... I don't know, that? Huh. Let's take the tooth. You reach down for it. Uncouth villain, he curses, batting your hand away. Now we'd best get going on. Uh, we'd best be getting on. We don't want you back here where you finally die. Get, get, when I die? Yes. Throbin closes his dirt-smugged eyes and concentrates, and slowly the walls of Mampang return. Okay, so that... He cast the spell, didn't he? There you are again, smiles the beggar, who is now back as he began. He lifts a crooked finger. Not a word, there are spies everywhere. One last thing to do. Draw your sword. Uh, I don't think I need... 
I'm being used. I... I don't know what to throw... Why? It's the sort of thing people do in Mampang. Draw it. Okay. Uh, that's a good reason. But he's clearly hiding something from me. I can't decide. I need to decide. I can't go back in time either. So these decisions, whatever happened, I really didn't get too much choice in the in the previous one. Although going towards him might have, I might have been able to see him cast a spell or something. Because I'm pretty sure he just cast a spell. I wouldn't be able to uncast that, sure. But he doesn't know I suspect him. If I do indeed suspect him, which I'm not really sure I do. Holy crap! Uh, I'm going to... Uh, let's keep the, the facade here. I don't think it's gonna end up in my death, and I don't think it will uh, bring me any closer to my death either. So uh, let's 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 draw the blade. You obediently draw your blade. Throbin beams with glee, and then before you can stop him, he runs himself deep onto the blade. What the hell? For the ghosts of the backlands, I curse you with this. He whispers. And there is fury in his eyes. In the last moments, you see him hurl up his arms, creating some kind of incantation. A terrible force builds around his body, and then seems to only half explode. You are caught at the moment of detonation. I didn't die, though. Did I? The explosion dies away, its force curiously unspent, as though waiting. But you feel stronger for it. What? You look around, still disorientated. Uh, there is no sign of the beggar. The road runs past you, east and west. Time to continue. I sh... Damn it. Damn it. He's... G I just... I just... I just... I, I just screwed up my game. I just screwed up my game. I think I, I got a bad ending. Right there. Right there. Because... Uh, right there. Damn it. Damn it. You remember my rhetoric right there? I said, I don't think it's going to get me any closer to my death. Because I just imagined that I would be beaten to death if something terrible happened. I didn't expect him to curse me as I killed him or something. I don't know. Holy crap. Anyway, I don't think we need to go this way. Although, to be honest, this might be a place, a good place to hide people. And then we have... Vi it seems that all of these towers are places where we need to go. And it seems that there are indeed a lot of towers that we go through. And I think I'm going to do just that. Look at these. Look at these. Look at that. We're going in there. Okay, let's go this way. Oh my god. Uh, were we full health before? I think we were. You continue along the road. The middle of the day is hot. You pass a, a side street leading off into a maze of smaller streets and alleys. Uh, we're not going to go there during the day if we can avoid it. I'm going to go during the night because that way I can expect to be robbed. But at least I know there's not going to be anybody that's spotting me or anything. The road leads away towards a ruined, por a ruined portion of the citadel. The sun has reached its highest point now. Yeah, we're going to continue going north. Apparently north is this way. The road ends in a tall wall of obsidian black bricks. That tall enough to keep out a giant. But the wall is crumbled, do uh, brought down by the piercing gripweed vines that cover its length. You could scramble over the fallen stones and inside, and inside easily enough. You are in the middle part of the day, and yet the citadel is still cold. Uh, let's look over the wall. You scramble up onto a block and peer over the wall. Beyond stretches an empty region of lapping water, from which tall, isolated, gloomy towers rise. Strange noises reach you from across the wall. Oh, so this is water, then. I thought it, this would be stone or something, but it kind of makes sense that it's water. It kind of looks like that a little bit. It is weird that we have all these, uh, stepping stones, as it were. They're, they're kind of huge in comparison to the houses, but maybe they're not, actually, because, yeah, well, actually, well. Uh, let's see. I, I, it's like my, my size would probably be about the smallest one you can get over here, I think. Maybe a little bit less. Let's go. Climb over the wall. You scramble up over the broken wall onto a narrow strand of stone on the edge of a watery pool. Towers rise on all sides, connected by spidery paths. Sand is scattered over the edge of the pool. Uh, let's con I don't need to sand. Let's move, make a move. The path between the towers awaits. Oh, look at that. They gave me... Oh, this is pretty cool, actually. That did change the, the camera perspective. The path. You'll leave the shade of the wall and follow the stepping stones out across the water. Everywhere, the signs of ruin abound. Weed cracks crack the stones. Weeds. Weeds crack the stones. Turret roofs and uh, buttresses have collapsed into heaps. Why has the Archmage allowed such ruin? Surely the rumor of his death cannot be true. What is this place? It looks like no part of Mampang you have yet encountered. The air itself is somehow different. There is a tension here. The air itself feels tightened, as though the world is stretched thin. A taut drumskin pulled over a too wide frame. It, 
It feels as though the tiny, tiniest step, or tiniest step, I guess, might unleash a powerful rupture. Okay, I'm gonna look at the stars first. You look up at the stars, but cannot, and, but can find nothing. The starlight seems to bend and divert before it can reach you, as though being funneled away. What is happening in this place? The path splits here, with the shortest way leading up an arched doorway in a nearby tower. You look over at the nearby tower. It is squat and ugly, with a low, slightly squalid archway leading inside. But but you must must keep go moving. Okay, we are gonna explore all of these towers. Uh, that's pretty cool, actually. What just happened here? We're gonna explore all the towers. I think I this now this one doesn't connect to anywhere, so I'm just gonna go in there, get hurt or something terrible, and see what happens. The sun is beginning to lower and the air begins to cool. You cross the waters and push your way inside the crumbling tower without knowing what you might find. Once inside, you immediately break out into a smile. This tower might be gloomy, but it's certainly a relief after the ruin in outside. Uh, well, it might be an illusion as well. Can I cast a spell? Apparently I can, which is kind of interesting. You open your arms to cast a spell and end up falling over backwards and collapsing into giggles. Such a shame there's no one here to enjoy this place with you. It really is quite delightful. The atmosphere of this place seems generally good for you. What a charming place. Okay, I'm gonna leave. You head for the door, but get distracted by the way of the uh, by the way the view of the world outside moves left and right as little as you sway from side to side. You are soon standing on the spot and just swaying. Can I pray for aid? I think I might be able to. Let's pray for aid, because I think we might be about to die. You close your eyes and attempt to offer a prayer, but end up singing a song from your childhood instead. Five sightmasters wearing spiky hats. The, songs bring, the song brings a smile to your face, and it must be said, a tear to your eye. Oh boy. You have a quick peek around the room, this way and that. It is curiously dark. You pay special attention to the corners, hoping to find something interesting. A colorful spider, maybe, or some nice juicy moss. You don't see anything, and after a while, start to feel a bit let down. Leave. Why would you leave? This empty chamber is fascinating. You turn around on the spot a few times to get a full view, and fall over. Uh, look at the doors. You look over at the doors. There is one behind you and one in front, but when you try to count them, you find you can't quite manage it. It's probably because turning to look at one means that the other one is behind. So you can't see it anymore, and you can hardly... Well, if you... Well, that's an easy way to... to there's an easy way to fix that. Sitting down might work... But laying down actually would be a little bit better, maybe, if you get both on your side. Anyway, you can hardly count something you can't see, after all. Yeah, we have more than 180 degree vision, I think. Well, some people don't, but most of us do, I think. Eventually, you decide there are most likely two doors here, even if you can't really be certain. You drop down onto all fours, quite merrily. This is no kind of place to sleep, but it's a great place to cross your legs. You try crossing them one way and then the other, but neither way is really comfortable. You are forced to stand up once more. Clearly, there's something wrong with this, with the floor. You pause where you stand. Okay. This is really disconcerting, actually. You pa pause where you stand to regard the cracks in the flagstone underfoot. You trace them this and that way. They form loops, branch, and then rejoin. It is, you realize, after some time, almost as though all the stones fitted together. After tracing a crack for several minutes only to have it disappear under your own boot, you look up once more. You have another tr uh... You have another try for the far door, though you are by now turned around enough that you can't really be sure which door is which. Stepping out into the open, you feel a slight headache coming on, as though you had drunk too much ale. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go this way, and if it send me, sends me back this way, it's fine. But the reason why I'm going this way is because after I get into this tower, because it doesn't seem to be... Uh, it seems to be a dead end, so I want to go that way anyway, and I don't want to come back through this tower, because it seems to be some kind of magic, but I think I'm gonna go be sent to the, to the other tower, the other door or something. You step back out onto the path and follow it a short way. Three paths meet at this point in the shadow of the eastern rock. From the eastern tower, you hear the faintest sound of music. And that's, that's gonna be that one or this one? Hmm... I suppose it's that one, it's the eastern one, so it's not the one just right next to me. The wind picks up a little spray f from the water and splashes it into your face. It stings where it touches you. Why? You lean out over the path and look down into the water. It's black, reflectionless, as though in infinitely deep. You drop one of your pebbles into the water. It sinks without a trace and without even a ripple. The air seems to fizz and crackle with secret energy. Which way now? I can go to the nearby tower. That's actually quite interesting. There's a door there, because I didn't see that. But I want to go that one. Man, that is... 
I kind of got, I got, I, I didn't kind of get scared. I got really scared for my life right there. I thought I was going to die. You, the sun begins to dip heading towards the horizon. You enter the next tower nervously. A long entrance hallway turns a sharp corner, widening gradually. A patch in the ceiling drips water. You hear the echo of music, soft and rhythmic. I'm going to press on. I think this is going to be fine. The hallway opens without a door out, uh, what? The hallway opens without a door out onto a large space, a ballroom. The gilded ceiling is collapsing in places, the furnishings are long rotten, but still a, mel a melancholic tune is playing from somewhere in the walls. No, oh, this is haunted or something. And on the polished wooden floor, dancers turn and wheel in slow arcs. You hang back, watching the dancers. The dancers sway deftly, but their rocking movements cannot disguise what they are. A group of corpses moving with mechanical perfection about the room. Their faces slack and rotten, they stare at nothing. The skin is like parchment, worn to the bones where they grip their partners still. Uh, across the hall is another door. Can I cast a spell? There's gotta be a necromancer around or something. Wait a minute, isn't the Archmage a necromancer as well? Or am I just uh, mistaken there? So I got mud over there, no longer magic, it would seem. I got uh, gum, which makes me stick to the floor. We have res over here, although that probably wouldn't work too well. Although, I, I do have... That's eh, probably not going to be important. The illusion of treasure. That's definitely not going to be something I want. So let's just watch the dance, I guess. You watch them waltz. Their movements are disturbing to see, rigid and poised on the downbeat, but sagging after each step. Backs droop and limbs go slack until the rhythm yanks them back up. The music is hypnotic, tantalizing. So it's like they are... Uh, what's the word? Like string puppets. Uh, let's be crazy. You grab a dancer and pull them to the floor. They clatter down, bones collapsing into dust. Their partners continue, arms still poised as if they were there. No others react. You cannot help but dance along, trying to match the steps of the swirling couples. This macabre movement feels oddly com comforting. The music soothes you and you follow its course. But you are soon carried back by the flow of the dance to the door. It seems you cannot truly join without a partner. There is a lone dancer now, the partner of the one you pulled to the floor. You slip in and fall quickly into rhythm. The skeletal grip tightens around your hand and waist. You keep dancing, the music taking hold of your brain. Your partner's grip tightens further, painful now. Bones slide down your back, letting go no longer seems like a no longer seems like a possibility. Okay. Oh. Nothing matters now but endless rhythm. Oh, I know what happened. No, I don't know what happened. Nothing matters now but endless rhythm, the haunting tune. Your steps are in perfect time, and you feel stronger than ever, as though you will never tire. Uh, you see what happened? My stamina went up, my maximum won. I think this is safe. I should have cast a, I should have really cast a, a sus, but uh, let's step and turn a step. Let's go with that one. Uh, after time, you we you, after time, you without measure. Hmm. You begin to feel a terrible thirst, but somehow it burns your throat. It is not enough to disrupt the movement or your dance. The lipless green of your partner smiles back, a constant companion, and you take another twirl around the room. You try to escape, but the music will not stop, the tune will not end. You glide errantly past the wreck of your partner's previous partner, where she lies in a crumbled heap on the floor. You struggle and pull your partner, but succeed only in dancing this way, that way, in fascinating rhythms that once began echo around the dancers in the, f in the room, until you are all dancing more vigorously and tiring further still. In last, in a last desperate tiny act of rebellion, you step on your partner's toes. She lifts her eyes to look at you sharply, her hand letting go for just a moment in surprise. It is enough to escape back across the floor, gasping for relief. Your muscles are aching. How long have you been dancing? The sun is now sinking down. It will be night soon. That's, that was actually pretty interesting. I, uh, let's see, where do I want to go? So if I go to the far door, I, I want to go back. I want to go back, so if I can go back, that, that'd be fantastic. Um, back away. You're back quickly away from the haunted ballroom, alarmed by its circling occupants. That was an interesting thing. That was really, really interesting thing. Oh man, my, the heartbeat right there. You return to the path and walk a short distance. The sun has almost set, and the sky has turned a deep purple. Soon it will be dark once more. Three paths meet at this point, in the shadows of the eastern rock. From the eastern tower you hear the music of the dancers. Every path seems weighed down with sadness and oppression. It is not a place to stand still.
And with that, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead, leave a comment, like the video. But above all, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.